The church I just told you to sit down, but now you can stand back up, amen, if you've turned there. Amen. Amen. I swear we ain't going Catholic around here. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 18. I want to read uh, a few verses of scripture here and give you a thought that the Lord put on my heart this week and uh, hopefully it'll be a help and a blessing to you. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 1 says this. It says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And verse number 2 said, And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Let us pray. Father, we need your help this morning. We need you to preach through us. We can do nothing on our own, but we need you, dear Lord. And Father, we pray that you'd come down and meet with us in this service. Father, we pray for uh, everything that's said and done. Pray for those getting baptized today, that you'd be with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. Here we find, uh, I, I, I was studying this this week and, and kind of was thinking on Bible school when I was studying it, and then it seemed like God just kind of gave us another thought in this. So we're going to roll with it. Amen. But here we find the disciples, they, they asked Jesus a question. They asked Jesus, they said, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Amen. Amen. And I want you to notice something. The words in red don't start to verse number three. Amen. Amen. There's a verse in between the question and the words in red. Amen. There's something that happens in between there. Amen. Amen. Notice they ask him, these are the disciples. Amen. The ones that are uh, 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 the, the, the followers of Jesus. Amen. They ask him a question. And in verse number two, it said, And Jesus called a little child unto him. Amen, and said, and set him in the midst of them. Amen, notice this, let me tell you this, uh, sometimes when you ask God something and you don't get an answer right away, don't fret. God's got to set something up to show you the answer He's got for you. Amen. Amen. I've said that before. Amen. I'll say it again. Amen. Notice, they didn't get their answer right away. Maybe they got a little confused when they when Jesus looked at them and just turned away and grabbed that little boy. Amen. Amen. We don't know. Amen. Amen. But let me tell you this, friend. Amen. Amen. They didn't get the answer right away. But that's not what I want to preach on out of this. You can have that. That's extra gravy. Amen. Amen. You can have that. Amen. But I want you to see this. I want you to see this here. It said, it said, they asked him a question, and Jesus called a little child unto him. Amen. There, there's a lot I could, uh, I could say about that, but, but I want you to notice this. Jesus saw this little child and thought he was important enough to be used. Amen. Amen. Thought that he could use him. Amen. Saw this little child, amen, and said, I've got to have him. Amen. If this is going to work, I've got to have them. Amen. Let me tell you, friend, amen, amen, from the pulpit to the pew, and I'm talking to the children as much as I'm talking to the adults this morning. Friend, there's some times when God says, if this is going to work, I've got to have you. I've got to have you. I've got to be able to use you. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you this. I want to preach on this thought. I might not be long or I might be really long. Amen. That covers both sides. Amen. Amen. I might be somewhere right there in the middle where you like me. Amen. 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 But let me tell you this. I want to preach on this thought this morning. Can God use you? Can God use you. Because let me tell you this, friend, this morning, God is willing to use you. Amen. And let me tell you this, God wants to use you. Amen. Amen. But friend, when it comes, but, but whether or not God can use us relies on you and I. Amen. Relies on us. Amen. I want you to see some things in this child, amen, uh, that, that the Lord spoke about and uh, that this child uh, uh, can be an example for. There was a reason God used him. Amen. God's not going to use you for no reason. Amen. And God has a purpose. Amen. When God saved you, amen, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but when God saved you, friend, He didn't save you to warm a church pew. Amen. I believe you ought to be in church, but I believe you ought to do something for God. Amen. I believe uh, the Bible said... Uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that none of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then verse number 10 of that same chapter said, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, that we should walk in them. 
Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Amen. God saved you to do something. Faith without works is dead, is what the Bible says. Amen. It says, show me thy faith uh, without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Amen. You know how somebody knows you're saved? By what you do for God. Amen. By who you are. Amen. Not by what you tell them. Amen. Amen. You can tell them all day you're saved. I can tell you all day I'm a puppy dog. Amen. And you're never going to believe me until I start acting like a puppy dog. Amen. That's the same way it is with being a Christian. You can tell them until you're blue in the face uh, that you're, in a, you're a Christian. Amen. But until you start acting like a Christian, they'll never believe you. They'll never believe you. I want you to see a few things, three things this morning. I want you to see in this scripture and keep your Bible right here and we'll be good. Look at what it said here. It said, it said there, verse 2, Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Number one, let me tell you this. Can God use you? Well, God can only use you if you're converted. Amen. God can only use you if you're saved. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you this. I make no apology in saying this. If you're lost this morning, you're as dead as you've ever been. Amen. You are dead and you're just taking up space is all you're doing. You're not contributing to anything. Amen. You're lost. Amen. On your way to a devil's hell. Amen. Which is real and enlarging daily according to the Bible. Amen. Friend, let me tell you. Amen. Amen. Lost people go to hell. Amen. And no man make no apologies on that, friend. Amen. If you're lost, the world don't like to hear that. Amen. The modern church don't like to hear that. Amen. They don't like to hear telling people that they're going to hell. Well, bless God, preacher, you just can't stand and tell somebody they're going to hell. You're judging them. No, I'm not. Amen. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Amen. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, you're going to hell. Amen. Amen. Without a doubt. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, you ain't got to wait to find out. Amen. You ain't got to wait to find out. It's all right. Don't worry about him. He's just shouting. Amen. Some of y'all ought to take note. Amen. Amen. Let's be, just loosen up a little bit. It'll be okay. Amen. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. You ain't got to wait till you die to find out where you're going. Amen. amen. Let me tell you, those that waited till they died to find out where they're going, you know where they're at? They're in hell. Amen, they're in hell. Amen, because let me tell you, friend, there ain't no mistake in what I've got. Amen. amen. I've never, amen, friend, say, preacher, you ever doubted? Yeah, I've doubted, amen. You've doubted too, amen. But at the end of the day, I know exactly where I'm going. I can pillow my head tonight knowing that if I don't wake up in the morning, I'll be with Jesus. Amen, amen. friend, let me tell you, it's imperative that you be saved. He said, except you be converted. There is no other way to get to heaven. Amen, you know that? Works cannot save you. Works cannot save you, friend. You can be in church at seven days a week and it will not get you to heaven. He won't even make a dent in getting you to heaven. Amen? Amen? And God does not, God's not concerned with that when it comes to getting you to heaven. Amen? It said, except you be converted. Amen? Except you be converted. Notice this. Look what it said there. Verily I say unto you, except you be converted. It said, and become as little children. Say, preacher, what do you mean? you got to come as a little child. You know, a little child, when you tell them something, more often than not, they're just going to believe you. They're a little child. They, they ain't been corrupted with everything in this world. Amen. And all the, all, all, all the awfulness of it. Amen. Amen. When you come as a little child, that takes away all those technicalities. It takes away all those complications. Amen. It takes away all those things about, well, it, it, it was, was Jesus really born on, on Christmas Day? That ain't got anything to do with salvation. Amen. Ain't got anything to do with December 25th. Ain't got anything to do with salvation. Amen. Amen, friend. Amen. Uh, the, 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 all, those, all those complications, all those technicalities, the children don't care about that. Amen. They care about yes or no. Amen. Friend, it puts it right in perspective. Amen. He said, except you be converted and become as little children. Amen, friend. If you're going to get saved, you're going to come. You're going to have to come just believing. 
Just believing. Amen. Just believing. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, that's what salvation is. It's faith believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Apostle Paul over there, when they, when they got out of that uh, jail, amen, they, they hung around. Amen. You know why they hung around? Because there was something there for them. Amen. Just because God releases you from what's binding you doesn't mean it's time for you to jet out of there. Amen. There might be something hanging around for you. Amen. Amen. There might be something that, that, that needs, there might be somebody there that needs what you've got. Amen. Amen. He hung around. Amen. That Philippian jailer was ready to kill himself. I thought about this a long time. Amen. If that Philippian jailer had killed himself, he would have went to hell. I mean, right there in that moment, he hadn't talked to Paul yet. Amen. He was, he was, he was just going to kill himself because if he went back and said, these prisoners are gone, it's over, friend. He was going to get killed anyway. Amen. So he said, I'm just going to kill myself. Amen. If he killed himself, friend, he would have went to hell because he didn't know Christ. Amen. At that point. Not because he killed himself, because he didn't know Christ. But Paul said, we're all here. You know what that jailer said? He didn't say, why are you still here? He didn't say, you know, all these things. He didn't, I mean, he didn't ask him. He just come as a little child. He said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, friend. Let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you, friend, salvation, we've made it so complicated when it is so simple. Amen, when it is so simple, friend. Except you be converted, amen. God can't use a, a sinner. God can't use a sinner. Amen. Because you're not, God's not your master. Amen. God is not, uh, you, the Bible says what man can serve two masters. Amen. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve Satan. Amen. You can't, you can't, friend, let me tell you, you cannot straddle the fence. Amen. Amen. Uh, friend, uh, my pastor used to say all the time, he says, listen, friend, some people have got so much of God in them that they can't enjoy the world and so much of the world in them that they can't enjoy the house of God. Amen. You're going to have to make a decision. Amen. You can't, you can't live on both sides of the fence. Amen. You can't be drunk on Friday night. You can't be drunk on Friday night and be in God's house Sunday morning and think everything's okay. One or the other is going to end up going. Amen. You keep giving in to that sin, I'll tell you which one will end up going. That'll be God's house. Seen it happen too far, too many times, amen. Too many times, amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you this. Except you be converted. Amen. God's not going to use a sinner. Amen. So God can use someone that is converted. Let me tell you this. Look at verse 4. I'm trying to go look at verse 4. Look what it says there. It says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. Amen. That little child was important for God to use. Amen. He said, Who's having that force shall humble himself? This little child, the same as the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Let me tell you this, friend. God can use somebody that's converted, number one, and God can use somebody that's emptied of themselves. Amen. Empty. I'm glad Brother Eddie sung that song this morning. Let's forget about ourselves for a little while. Man, let me tell you, let me tell you this. I'm glad, I, I'm thankful that I'm pastoring this church. Ain't nowhere else I'd rather be. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I, I, I am blessed beyond measure to be here. Friend, let me tell you, amen. We, 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 ain't, we ain't got smoke coming out underneath the stage. Praise God. Amen. We ain't got flashy lights. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We ain't got a congregation of 2,000 because we ain't got flashy lights and a smoke coming out underneath the stage. But we got God. Amen. I'd rather be somewhere where God's at than somewhere where the crowd's at. Amen. Amen. But let me tell you this, friend. Amen. This ain't William's church. This ain't William's service. Amen. This service ain't about me. It ain't about you, friend. Amen. Bible school yesterday. It ain't William's Bible school. Amen. I'm glad we was able to do it, but it ain't about me. It ain't about you, friend. Let me tell you, friend, when we decide to get emptied of ourselves, Amen, amen, and get to focusing on God, amen. That's when we'll see something happen, amen. Look what it said. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Apostle Paul, he said, I'm crucified with Christ. 
Apostle Paul realized, amen, amen, that that, that crucifixion is not just uh, Jesus dying on the cross. wasn't just uh, to give us uh, salvation, amen, but it was to give us a picture of how we're going to have to live, amen. We're going to have to sacrifice some things, friend, amen. We're going to have to let self go, amen. Let that pride go, amen. Friend, let me tell you, the Bible says that, that pride goeth before destruction, amen. Always, uh, destruction always comes after pride. Amen. After pride, after being, friend, let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you this. We've gotten to the point, amen, where if we don't get a pat on the back, we ain't coming back. Amen. Well, bless God, I sung. Nobody told me I did a good job. I ain't coming back to that church no more. Well, then who was you singing for? Who was you singing for? Amen. Well, bless God, I show up every service. You know, uh, I was talking to Dad the other day. We was talking about the prodigal son over there. And, and ain't that how we are when the prodigal son comes back? I mean, the, the father put everything on him. And the other son that was there the whole time got jealous. The other son that stayed in the house that whole time, he got jealous of him. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. You know why? Because he had some pride up in him. He had some pride in there, amen. He was worried, amen, amen, about himself more than he was about God. Let me tell you, friend, let me tell you this, amen, amen. Friend, it ain't about you, amen. When we get to realizing that this whole thing ain't about us, Amen. We'll get to realizing what it is about. Amen, friend. Amen. I don't care what you say about me. Amen. I don't care what you do about me, friend. Let me tell you, amen, at the end of the day, what matters is what God says about me. Amen. And what God says about you. Amen. Man will run your name through the ground. Amen. Man will run your name through the ground. Amen. Amen. And as far as I'm concerned, let them. I'm tired of fighting against them, ain't you? The Bible said we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers of the rulers of the darkness of this world. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you this. We don't fight against one another. I'm getting ahead of myself. I get there in a minute, amen. But we don't fight against one another, amen. It's not. It's not we're not. We're not in battle with one another, amen. If that means if, if your enemy's going to talk about you, let them talk about you. Let them go on. Amen. If they're going to say something about you, well, I'm blessed God. I wish that preacher would shut up. Amen. Let them talk about it. She knows what I'm talking about. Amen. She's amen to me. Praise God. Amen. Some of y'all ought to take note. Amen. Amen. Look at her. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, friend. Amen. Let me tell you. Amen. Amen. Emptied of ourselves. God can't use somebody that's full of themselves. Amen. Because all they're going to want is the credit. All they're going to want is the credit. Amen. Let me tell you, some of the best, some of the best things that's ever happened in my life, I never got any credit for. Amen. Some of the best things I've ever been a part of, nobody ever put put their hand on my back and said, "I'm proud you did that." Or, I'm proud of you. Amen. I'm not saying that to say you should feel sorry for me. I'm saying that because I'm glad it didn't happen that way. Amen. I'm glad, friend. Let me tell you, when I first started preaching, I I, I was nervous. I, I was nervous. It's been several years ago now, and I was nervous. Amen. I thought the phone ain't never going to ring. Nobody's going to call me if I announce my call to preach. And that phone rang off the hook. Scared me to death. Made me more nervous when the phone started ringing. Amen. Amen. I thought, Lord, I don't know what I prayed for. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, I went to a lot of places. Some places I didn't know anybody. Amen. And friend, when I left, they probably didn't know me. Amen. But at the end of the day, it didn't matter if they knew me. It mattered if they knew who I was preaching about. Amen. It wasn't, I wasn't there for them to know me. Amen. I was there for them to know the Lord. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, it ain't about the impact that you want to make. The impression that you're going to leave. Amen. It's about what God is going to leave. Amen. Amen. What's God's going to leave through you? Amen. The Bible said over there in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, Be ye not drunk with wine where is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Be ye filled with the Spirit. Friend, let me tell you, amen, you filled in the Spirit, you're going to have to empty yourself out. Amen. 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 We get filled with, with the Holy Ghost, friend. We're going to have to empty ourselves out. Amen. I believe, friend, it, it, it's rare that somebody gets filled with the Holy Ghost. Because there's too much of us that we like to hold on to. Amen. There's too much of us. We'll say, God, you can take this area of my life. And God, you can take this area of my life. But that area, I've got under lock and key. I, I, I got that under control. That's not how it works, friend. God's not. Let me tell you this. Jesus is not your co-pilot. He was never intended to be your co-pilot. 
Amen. Jesus was intended to drive. Amen. And you to sit there and be quiet. Amen. And serve him. Amen. Amen. Friend, let me tell you. Amen. Let me tell you this. Amen. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. Amen. You know this. You know this. I'll get off this point in a minute. Amen. But you know this. According to Proverbs chapter 6, God even hates a proud look. He does. Amen. God hates that, that, that proud look. What is that? That's, you know where the, where the proud look comes from? It's important, it's important they didn't say God hates pride. It said the proud look. Because pride's going to come before that proud look. That haughty spirit's going to come before that proud look. Amen. Amen. That, that I'm, I'm here, let the show begin. And it's going to come before that proud look. Amen. God hates that. God hates that. Friend, amen. Amen. Let me tell you, let me tell you, these preachers that think they're rock stars, they need to sit down. They need to sit down and realize it ain't about them, it ain't about their name. It's about God. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Amen. God can use somebody that's converted, and God can use somebody that is emptied of themselves. Amen. Let me tell you this. Verse number five. Read this now. Look at this. Verse number five. And the Lord said this. He said, And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the death of the sea. And y'all think I'm a mean preacher. <laughs> Amen. Y'all think I'm rough. Amen. The Lord just told him right there. He said, You offend one of these, it's better that you go drown. Amen. Jessica's going to get an experience of that later. Amen. Praise God. Amen. No, I'm kidding. Amen. 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 Johnny brought a life jacket. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But let me tell you, friend, amen. He said it'd be better that you go drown than you offend one of them little ones. Amen. amen. Than you offend one of them little ones. I, I, it bothers me so much. Let me, let me get on my soapbox for a minute, can I? Amen. It bothers me so much. As older generation, amen, amen, I understand what the audience I'm preaching to, amen, if you like this, get right, amen, I don't think most of you like this, amen, but bless God, I, them children are just trouble. How many of you heard that from somebody somewhere along the way? Bless God, them children are just trouble, that's all they are, I wish they'd just shut up, I wish this and that, I wish, let's go this, 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 this. Friend, the Bible said if hey, you offend one of those, hey, God said it'd be better for you to go drown. Amen. 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 Better for you to go drown. You know what the next generation is? Those little children. Amen. Amen. If we don't invest in them now, who's going to? The world's going to. Amen. Amen. And the ch doors to the church are going to be closed. Amen. They're going to be closed. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, friend. Let me tell you this. Amen. Let me tell you this. Friend, he said, Who shall, hey, Whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. Let me tell you this. Last but not least, we see that God, He can use somebody that's converted. He can use somebody that's empty to themselves. And He can use somebody that's treating others right. That's treating other people right. Amen. Amen. Not casting people away. Amen. I'm not in the business. I, I have I, some of my favorite preachers. I've heard stand up and say this, and it's and it's eat at me. I've heard them stand up and say, "Well, I was glad when they left." Amen. Lord, that preacher needs to get right. Amen. Let me just say it like that, with all power of God behind me. Amen. Amen. You ought to be glad somebody leaves. Amen. Amen. You better be glad when they get right. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Amen. I'm not in the business of running people off. Amen. I'm not. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I don't want to be. Amen. If you choose to get mad and go, that's your decision. Amen. Amen. But that's not why I'm here. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to see the church grow. I'm here to see God's kingdom grow. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm here. Amen. Let me tell you, friend. Amen. God can use somebody that's treating others right. Amen. If you treat everyone around you like dirt, amen, don't be surprised if God didn't call on you, amen, to witness to them. Amen. Think about it. Yeah, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me just help you for a minute. God ever called you to witness to somebody and you said, God, with how I've treated them, I can't. I'll raise my hand. I've been right there. <laughs> I said, God, I've, I've treated them so badly, I can't witness to them. I can't witness to them. And you know what? And you know what? I haven't been able to until I apologized to them. Until I made some things right. I haven't been able to. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? God couldn't use me at that point. God was willing to and God wanted to, but God couldn't. 
Amen. Because of what I've done. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, treat other people right. Amen. The Bible says this. Let me help you out this morning. Amen. This will get you to shout. Amen. Everybody loves this verse. Amen. Matthew 7 and verse 1. It says, Judge not that you be not judged. And get this. It said, For what judgment, with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what meat, measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And it said, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? It doesn't even say in thy enemy's eye. Did you catch that? Well, get that for a minute. It doesn't say in thy enemy's eye. It doesn't say in thy neighbor's eye. It says in thy brother's eye. Amen. Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Amen. Friend, let me tell you, why are we the worst to go around looking for the worst in everybody? Amen. Amen. They could be here, amen, every service for a year, and you'd still find something wrong with them. Amen. Amen. I don't want a church like that. Let me tell you, amen, this is Wednesday night thoughts creeping in on Sunday morning again. Here it goes again. Amen, but let me tell you, friend, amen, amen, don't you talk bad about those that are faithful to God. Amen, don't you talk bad about anybody. You let God deal with the people, amen, that do you wrong, amen. Let God deal with them because you can't deal with them, amen. You, all you're going to do, amen, remember this. Remember this, Paul said this. Paul said he was an ambassador of Christ. You know what an ambassador is? That means every action that Paul took when he said he was an ambassador, it was representative of Christ. Every action, you and I are ambassadors of Christ. Every action we take is representative of Christ. Amen. When they see the Christian out at the bar drinking on Friday night, they're going to think that Christ is okay with that. Amen. Amen. Look, uh, we went, when we first started this door-to-door -door visitation, I'll never forget it. One of the first doors we knocked on, right down the road down here. Amen. Knocked on the door. The fellow answered the door, and I invited him to church, and he told me, and he said, is it full of hypocrites? He said, every church I've ever been to has been full of hypocrites. People that say they're one thing, and they're somewhere else at the other time. And you know what I told him? I said, Yeah. I said, every church you'll ever go to is going to be full of hypocrites. Every church you're ever going to go to. But you know what? You know what, that, you know what bothered me about it? Is that why it was his image of the church. That was, that was what we've shown that guy of the church. Amen. Amen. He, he, he'd never even heard of this church, so I'm not saying he'd, he'd seen it from this church, but that's what some church, that's what, let me tell you, that's what Christians, amen, because we're all the church, we're saved. We're the church, amen. No matter where you belong to, we're the church, amen. Amen. But that's what Christians somewhere had showed him. Amen. Just a bunch of hypocritical behavior. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Amen. Let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you this, amen. You need to know, friend, amen, that we need to treat one another right, amen. Don't be looking for the wrong in everybody else, amen. Look for the right in everybody else, amen. Pray. We need to exhort one another is what the Bible says. The Bible never tells us to tear one another down. Galatians chapter 5, it says, You bite and devour one another. Amen. It talks about that over there. It said, Be careful that you be not consumed one of another. Amen. Amen. You bite and let me tell you, you know what that means? We, we studied on that several, of course, it's probably been about a year ago now, but we, we study on that. You know what that means? And let me tell you what that means. Let me tell you what that means. When you bite and devour one another, it said, You be careful that you be not consumed one another. Me biting and devour over you all the time is going to consume me. I'm going to quit worrying about the church and worried about what's wrong with you. And I'm, I'm going to quit worrying about what I can do for God and worry about what's wrong with you. And I'm going to quit worrying about seeing souls saved and worry about what I can find on you. Amen? That consumes you. When we bite and devour one another, that consumes you, friend. Amen? Let me tell you, friend. Amen? Christian people ought to treat people right. They ought to treat people right. Let me tell you this. God can't use somebody that ain't treating other people right. He can't. He can't. He can't use... Let me tell you this. Let me, let, me, let me tell you this. Even when you think nobody's listening, somebody's listening to you. Amen. amen. When you're talking about somebody, amen, remember somebody's listening. Amen. Somebody's listening. They probably knows them. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you, it's kind of funny. I use this as an example and mom might get mad at me. Amen. Don't get mad at me, mom. I love you. Amen. Amen. I love you a lot. Amen. Amen. But let me, that's how she knows it's going to be a bad one. You hear that? She said, oh boy. Amen. Amen. But, but sometimes we'll be out in a restaurant or something and I'll see somebody and, and I'll see them first, somebody that I know and, and, and I won't say anything, but mom will see them 
And mom will say, hey, is that so-and-so? And I won't say anything because their family will be sitting right there behind us. And I'll say, Mom, shh, shh, yes. <laughs> say, preacher, what is, it? what is that? Why are you using that as an example? I'm saying that's how we get sometimes, though. We get to talking about other people thinking nobody cares, nobody's listening, but right there is somebody paying attention, amen, that we didn't, we were completely oblivious to, amen. Your words, what comes out of your mouth, your actions, amen, amen. You might think nobody's paying attention, but somebody's watching, amen. Somebody's paying attention to it. Somebody's listening to what you're saying, amen. Somebody's listening to your friend. Let me tell you, treat others right. I wrote this down here. What if God, let, let, me, let me say this, what if God, Treated you just like you treat those that you don't like. I ain't talking about the ones you do like. Amen. We treat them bad enough. Amen. And I'm talking about the ones that they just, 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 you, they just ain't something, just something that just ain't right about them. And I just, I just can't put my foot on it. And I just can't put my finger on it. And I'm just not going to treat them with as much love as I would treat somebody else. What if God treated you like that? What if God, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How many, by a show of hands, by a show of hands, I ain't going to ask for details. I just want to know, how many has ever had somebody do you wrong? Look at all of us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You're in this together. Amen. We're all in this on the same boat. Amen. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you this. And when they come and ask for something down the road, amen, amen, we were hesitant to help them out again. Amen. I'm glad God don't treat me like that. I'm glad God don't treat me like that. Let me say it again. I'm glad God don't treat me like that. Amen. When, when I've treated Him and I've done Him as wrong as anybody could do anybody wrong, but then when I come crawling back to Him, He don't say, no, I remember last time. He don't say, no, I remember what you did last time. No, I remember what you did 25 years ago. No, I remember what you did five years ago. No, I pulled it up. Look, God don't say, God don't say, let me pull out the Facebook and show you what you posted five years ago. Let me show you who you was five years ago. I understand you, you're saved. I understand you're this, you're that. But do you remember? God don't do that. God don't do that. Then why did God's people do that? Why did we do that, friend? Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I've said it once. I'm going to say it again. Mr. Sister Carolyn, come on to the piano. Get ready for a song. Let me tell you this. God will use you. God will. Use even you. God will use you. And God wants to use you. But where your heart's currently at, can God really use you? Where you're at this morning, can God use you? In any way He deems necessary, can God do it? Let me tell you, friend, as you stand and as they begin to play, let me tell you, friend, if God said, go witness to so-and-so, and you know who just came to your mind when I said so-and-so, could you do it? And God said, go witness to that one that done you so wrong, that drug your name through the mud, that made you feel like a fool. Go tell them how much I love them. Could you do it? If the answer is no, then God can't use you. God can't use you right now. Friend, if you got sin in your heart, God can't use you. God's not going to use somebody that's full of sin. Amen. I like that old song, 212, in the song book. It says, uh, keep on the firing line. It said, God will only use a soldier that he can trust. I want to be a soldier he can trust. I want to be able to say, God, you can. Whatever it is, you can use me. Ask yourself that question. Can God use you as they play?